All right. Everybody. Um, I'm not going to remember everybody's name. So let's center on that right now. I'll do my best. I can make no promises. So I know I don't. Uh, here's how this thing goes down. I've done a bunch of these. I like doing them. Um, but I also like you to participate. So if you have questions, fire away, right? The point of this thing is to leave here with all those questions answered. So I'll hang out as long as we need to or until Trent and those guys kick me out uh, or us out for that matter. But um, let's just get into it. Before we start, who's, who's first 70.3 is this? Beautiful. Whose first triathlon is this? Also beautiful. That does happen, by the way. Um, hey, what's up? <clears throat> so by way of introduction, can you see? Am I in the yeah, way? Yeah. All right. I'm Dave Jimenez. Uh, I'm a local coach. I coach with a group called uh, Octane Athletics Training Systems. There's five of us. We'll talk about it later. I'm going to do about three seconds, maybe a minute of marketing, and then we're going to move on. Um, Agenda-wise, by the way, we're here to talk about Austin. Good, good. Um, here's what we're going to do. Short intro, right? Talk about some things to do before you go. Um, that's going to be dangerous. Uh, race week. So what race week looks like. So we're almost there. So things to do from now until race time. Uh, we'll go over the course. We have some folks in the room I've know done the course before, so they'll help me um, by providing you uh, with some of their thoughts and, and ideas about the day out there. And then we're going to leave plenty of time from Q, for Q&A. Cool? All right, let's get started. So a little bit about Octane. There's five coaches. Four of us are local. One of us used to be. Jolene now lives in Cincinnati. Uh, all of us are active. We still race, um, if that's what you call what I do, racing. But, uh, yeah, I just got done doing Augusta. I've done two Ironman before. I've run five marathons, including the Ironman ones, because those do count. Uh, they all hurt, but they're all fun. Um, we center on communication, collaboration. We focus on your metrics. Um, we call ourselves a family, kind of fun group to be around. Um, and if you want to check out more about us, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you after the fact. There's Tabitha and Jeff. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you need to do before you go. Okay. First of all, this may be the only part of my life that is meticulously planned. Race week. Everything else is chaos. Three kids, wife. She works full time. I do two jobs or more. It's nuts, right? When it comes to race week, it's on lock, right? It's really important that you spend the next week or so focused on your race, right? Just making sure all the little things are sort of taken care of. And that's part of what today's presentation is about. <clears throat> so I searched and searched and searched for water temps, right? There used to be a fishing website out there that was awesome. And for some reason, they lost their data feed for, their, for the water temps. So to be completely and utterly honest with you, I have no idea what the water temp is at Decker Lake. Um, but what I will tell you is don't do what this guy did in Augusta a couple weeks ago and leave your wetsuit at home. Because then you find out it's wetsuit legal and you don't get to wear a wetsuit because you don't have it with you. So don't listen to your friends. Listen to me when I tell you that it's okay to put your wetsuit in your car and take it down there because chances are you'll get to use it. I got to use them last year. Um, so have it with you. Okay. Uh, year before too, right? And even though that was even, that was a pretty warm day, like last year. It's the, the lake there is uh, 60 feet at the deepest point. So it heats up fast, but it cools down fast. So uh, we'll see what the weather brings. Just take the wetsuit with you. Um, weather for the day looks pretty nice. Uh, 84 for the high right now. It'll change. It's Texas. But um, 59 for the low, which is much better than last year when it was in the 40s, if I remember correctly. It was pretty cold. So it'll be a pretty nice day. Um, thing to check is the wind. Right now it's pretty, it's pretty mild, 70 miles an hour, 7 miles an hour, 70. That would be brutal. I would consider not – if it was 70, I would consider not going. i got to tell you. I will admit this to you. 7 miles an hour would be kind of nice. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. <clears throat> 
So they have these at the, by the cash register, these checklists. They're also in the athlete guide. Who's read the athlete guide? That's more than usual. That's more than usual. There's also a pretty nice checklist in the athlete guide, by the way. Um, that's the checklist I tend to use. Hey, Mark, how are you? Um, but this one's up front, grab it, okay? If you don't have one of each of these things, it's fine. Do I need to separate you guys? Um, take one of these on your way out, use it, okay? It's really, really important um, because what I do is I lay it all out. This is literally what my living room looked like before I left for Augusta, right? So I've updated this picture. It used to be my, an old picture because I used to take like my entire garage with me. Now I just take the stuff I need. But what you'll notice is <clears throat> everything's kind of lined out. It's lined out sort of by discipline. So swim, uh, swim, bike, run, all the electronics, contacts, extra contacts, bring extra contacts, super important. Nutrition, I use Fig Newtons and some Gatorade, which is what I use. Make sure you have plenty of it. So take 50% more than you think you need. You can always bring it home with you, okay? Because you don't want to have to go hunting your nutrition down. But I just lay it out with the checklist and I check everything off the list. The thing you want to check are things like shoe strings, uh, goggle straps on the goggles, um, chin straps on your helmet, right? All these things can be taken care of between now and race day, right here at home, right here at the shop, for example. But if you get down there and one of those things goes wrong for you, it just elevates anxiety. You got to go hunting for a new shop to buy stuff. If you go to Expo, you may or may not find what you want. Um, check that stuff this week so that you can figure out a way to solve for it while you're still here at home and comfortable. But lay it all out. Um, this will not be the last time you lay it all out, by the way. Stay tuned. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about race week a bit. Things to do and not do on, on race week. So who hasn't been getting massages? Don't start getting massages now. Maybe this week, um, but definitely not next week. If you go to Ron's place for a massage, it's medieval and it will hurt you. So do it this week. Give yourself, it'll, it'll be great because your body will recover from it and you'll be feeling really good. If you do it next week and you haven't been doing it, it could, it could tear you up pretty good. Um, get yourself prepared. Again, go through the list. Get all your gear out. Um, I'll start gathering things up and creating little pods of equipment, like literally two weeks before the race. Drives the wife crazy. Um, clear your mind. <clears throat> In a lot of people's training peaks, especially if they're first-timers, I set aside like 10 or 15 minutes where they just, I just want them to think about a piece of the race. And I want them to think about it in a positive way. So kind of it's visioning it may sound a little out there and corny and a little hippie. Um, those that know me know that that's not really me, but I do believe in kind of visualizing the race, right? Kind of breaking it down in little pieces and thinking about what it is always ending with what the finish line is going to feel like. I do this for pretty much every race personally. Um, it just works for me. Stick to the plan. You're tapering now, everybody tapering? Yes, Dave, we're tapering. I hope you're tapering. If you're not tapering, start like now. Um, you should be in the taper. Whatever you have in your plan, stick to it. No more, no less, okay? If you don't, if you think taper is shutdown time, you're gonna, you're gonna um, actually take too much fitness off. We're not trying to take too much fitness off, we're just trying to let your body heal, right? So stick to the plan. If if your plan calls for you to do a hard bike ride tomorrow, do the hard bike ride tomorrow, okay? Because we're trying to keep the fitness, we're trying to keep the speed while you recover. So it's a balance. Just do what's in the plan. How many of you have a coach? Perfect. Do what they tell you to do. Um, pack your recovery gear with you when you go. Start to use it maybe during the taper. God forbid we get on the foam roller, right? Do that stuff. Anything you can do to accelerate the body to heal is – the better you're going to feel when you get there, right? And what we're trying to do is I had the conversation with Jeff today. Like we're just trying to heal you so that by next Wednesday, you, want to, you feel like you want to be shot out of a cannon, right? You're just ready to go. You're tired of resting. You're tired of not training as much, and you're just ready to roll, right? That's what we're trying to get you to feel. <clears throat> Things to not do. Do not wait to tune your bike. If you haven't done this yet, like 
right now. I don't know. I didn't look at the sheet to see what they're scheduling for, but Tuesday, get it in here. Okay. Cause again, if, if it's Tuesday, then yeah, next Tuesday. So you need to get your bike looked at. You can do it yourself, right? Give it a once over, take thing, take a look at things, check your brakes, right? They're a little soft. Get them, get them in here and get them adjusted. These are the kind of things, those are the kind of things those guys will kind of do on the fly for you. But if you need a once over, you better get in and get it done. Um, don't buy anything new. Don't use anything new, especially nutrition. Okay. Stick with what you've used. Does everybody have a nutrition plan? Okay. Let's talk afterwards, please. Um, don't over rest. Eight hours is good, right? Sleep, get plenty of it. 10, maybe too much, right? Just again, do what's in the plan, do what's normal for you. Get yourself, uh, get yourself ready. Next Monday and Tuesday, you're going to feel awesome. Don't push it. Okay. Stay the course. Okay. Don't go. If it's a zone two, 45 minute run, it's a zone two, 45 minute run. It's not four mile repeats at threshold, right? Do not do that. You're going to break yourself back down again. Do what's in the plan. <clears throat> do not be grumpy. Taper tantrums. I have a whole podcast about taper tantrums. I'm terrible. Like, I'm terrible personally. Try to focus on the positive, like I said. Good mindset, right? Focus on the race. Thank the people that have helped kind of see this training through with you, right? You spent a lot of time, a lot of 10 hour weeks. So try not to be grumpy. Um, <clears throat> this is a good one, Lindsey Corbin. Uh, get a lot of sleep early in the week. That's a really good point. The closer we get to race day, especially next week for the first timers, really stock up on sleep Wednesday, Thursday, okay? Friday night, can't promise you're gonna get a ton of it, okay? Still, after doing a bunch of these things, I still don't sleep that well the night before, sometimes even two nights before. So um, get a lot of sleep. Um, thank people, stay hydrated. It's a really good point. I got a call today. I have an athlete doing beach to battleship on Sunday. And for some reason, they went and ran in the middle of the day on Monday and ended up having to get an IV to, for dehydration. Not the phone call I want to get wait, race week, okay? So stay hydrated. Pick your flavor. Noon, Gatorade, I don't care what it is. Sip on it, okay? Just take a little more in. Up the salt content in your food um, starting this weekend. So it gets in and out of the body really fast, but you will get some adaptation from that. So don't worry about ticking the carbs up a little bit higher than you're used to and the salt up a little bit higher than you're used to. And um, I like to use the noon has a noon all day. I think it's called, is that what it's called? Does anybody know that? It's something you can sip on all day long, pretty much not your normal training stuff. I'll have that during race week. Um, some scheduling stuff. So, who's done Austin before? Okay, two transition areas here. Okay, we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. You've got one by the swim start, that's T1, and you have one by the, uh, the expo center. I thought I hit a button, sorry. Um, so, your packet pickup and all things interesting pretty much happen at the expo center. Um, you'll know where it is. You got to get there Friday or Saturday to get your packet picked up, get, your, get yourself checked in. You're going to need your driver's license and your USAT card. If you don't have the USAT card or you may forget it or something like that, there's an app, a USAT app, where you're, you're basically your card is on your phone. It's something I put on my phone before I leave just in case. I leave my keys back at the hotel or whatnot. I have that thing on my phone and it just presents, you can present it there. If you don't have either, it's not the end of the world. You just have to go to a different line. They'll look you up. They'll give you a card. So the lady that gives you your packet knows that you have your USAT things checked. Um, so no check-in on race morning. So especially for the first timers, like you got to check in Friday or Saturday. Okay. My recommendation is if you can get down there in time to check in on Friday. If you have flexibility with your work schedule, a really good idea to do that because Saturday you're going to want to 
you know, get things packed up to get your bike checked in and all that stuff. And I, I just rather you guys not have to do all that stuff in one day if you can help it. It's just personal preference, but something I recommend. Speaking of bike check-in, you have to do that on Saturday between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, you're going to turn your bike into T1, which is by the swim start at um, Walter Elong Park, which is a mile as the crow flies from the expo center, right? So, um, and by the way, you'll, you'll get to follow somebody just about anywhere, anywhere you want to go down there because it's where this thing is there's not normally a lot that goes on. So you'll, you'll know where to go. Um, all of these things are Googleable. That's a word. Um, so that's why I gave you guys some, some, uh, addresses here. These are also in the, uh, in the, in the athlete guide. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So a couple things on T1. Um, Carry your bike, right? Carry your bike out of T1. Carry your bike into T1 when you rack it. Uh, when you rack it and you got the down tire, stick a towel underneath it when you leave it overnight. You should be fine. Okay, the other thing is, is um, when you turn your bike in, you want 80 or so PSI in your tires. You're gonna fill your tires up the next morning whether you like it or not. So I like to just leave it in there kind of a little underinflated because that way with flux with the flux and the temperature overnight you're not going to show up on race morning and you got a pop tire or something that you have to start the day changing your tube out yes ma'am um they will fit in the bag yeah um air pump you can get from either somebody on a rack next to you somebody will have one with the family out there or they'll have neutral bike support in T1, so you can grab a pump or right. Uh, you can. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just saying that, like for Augusta, for example, I didn't even pack one. I just borrowed a neighbor's. A little bit, a little bit risky, but calculated. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be there, and I'll have a pump, but can't promise you'll see me. But if you do, you can flag me down, and I can give you a pump. Yes, sir. Good, Adam. Sorry. It can be if it rains, but um, it's close. It's far enough off the water where, unless it rains, it should be pretty dry. Uh, last year it was pretty muddy, but you got to remember we got to remember we got a lot of rain last year around right before the race. So this year we'll just see what the weather looks like. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. The other thing I'll tell you is this is one of those races where I tell people swim all the way out. If you just because you can touch bottom doesn't mean I want you popping up and walking out. Swim all the way out because I mean I just want you as close to the shore as you can before you pop up just to minimize any risk of stepping on something you don't want to step on right before you get on a bike. So swim until your hand hits the bottom and then pop up and get out. Okay. Um, the parking at T1 is non-existent. The parking by the Expo Center is abundant. It's really good. And they have a bus that runs. Um, it starts, the bus starts at, I think, 5. 5 or 5.30. I, I have to check that. I want to say it's, it is in the Athlete Guide. But there's a bus that leaves from, um, from T2 that'll take you back down over to the swim start, which is in T1. Um, a thing to note. So you have to check your run gear in no later than the morning of the race. You can also turn it in when you turn your bike in, which is what I would do personally. Um, it's one less thing to worry about, and I just turn it in at one time. Granted, you got to go to both places, but you're going to be up by the expo anyway on Saturday. Chances are, so just go ahead and turn your run bag in, your T2 bag, and just one less thing to worry about race morning. And then all you got to do is show up to the expo park hop a bus, drive down there, and you're good to go, okay? By the way, there's no outside cars or anything on that route, so the buses are really efficient. They just run back and forth, and they're the only ones on the road. So if you get there a little bit late, don't worry about it. Don't get too stressed out. Um, trans yes, ma'am, of course. Um, so if one checks one's bag, 
you bring it to race more with you race morning. You can, you can go back to T1 uh, race morning as well. T1 and T2. So you can visit the transitions on race morning, both of them. Right. Well, yeah. So, um, T1 is where you're going to have your bottle. So like if you want your bike bottle to have cold water or whatever in it, you're bringing that with you anyway, race morning. T T2, you can get, if you need to go in there and put something in the run bag, you have access to it. No, they don't lock you out or anything. Um, T1 opens at 5.30, closes at 7.15. First wave goes off at 7.30. And for those that are super fast, you can hang out for awards. Uh, so I mentioned you'll lay it out again. When I, this is Oceanside a bunch of years ago because I don't have that bike anymore. I love. Another question about T2. Yes, sir. Do you have to drop the run bag at T2 or is it, do they take it from you at T1 and take it back? To no, you have to drop it. Okay, so you have to drop it at T2. And then, and then I've only done one Ironman Man Brandon's race, and it's just they have all the bags just hanging up like in number order. Is that the way they do it? Uh, help me, Terry. You put it on the rack based on your numbers. So they have different racks for different numbers. Okay, it's basically just like right. two yeah. ones. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have a spot. You have a spot where your bike will get racked and your bag will be there. There'll be a stick. Yeah, it's not like a local race. You actually do have a designated spot, and most people tie their bag to the pole. And then when you come in off the bike, you rack your bike. You just pull the loop. It comes down. Your your stuff is there and available. To you. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So full distance races have like a field of bags. Okay. You have to find your your bag. Literally, it's like it looks like farming bags. Um, yeah, this is not that way. It'll be kind of at your spot. The other thing I'll say is for a technician, especially speaking, that he's on the ground, it has to be hanging from the bar. Yeah. So you have to keep stuff in the back. Yeah, and if once you get done with your bike, you have to bring your helmet, all your other bike stuff in the back. In the back. And put that bike, we'll put that bag somewhere else in the bike. Oh, you can't, you can't put anything on Nothing can be out. In C2, it's got all those in the Everything goes in the bag. It could be laying on the ground. They give you a bag. It says run. It says run bag. Put it in the bag. They'll bring those bags back to the finish line for you. You can pick them up to the finish line. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna stuff everything off the swim into your bike bag. So you can take the bike stuff. Yeah. 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 It'll fit. It'll all fit in there. Yeah. It'll all fit in there. Their bags. The bags are like a foot and a half squares. They're pretty big drawstring bags. Uh, tip on the bags, um, especially the T2 bag. I take some uh, neon colored um, duct tape and I, I duct tape my bag. So if, I'm, if it's hanging from the pole, I can generally know where I am, but I can look at and see where my bag is in this field of bags. So I'll just take some like hot pink or orange or something duct tape and put it across the top of my bag and I'll cross the bottom of my bag. So it's hanging there. I can kind of see it in the field of bags. So they all look the same. So, so. the other thing I would say is just take a marker and write your number on the bag with a good sticker. Yeah. Sometimes the stickers will fall off. So you write your number and you can Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely get a big Sharpie. And take that with you, and I'll tell you another reason to use it in a minute. Would you recommend putting your cell phone in your run bag? Is that the point? I would give it. I would not leave my cell phone in either one of the bags. Yeah, like Augusta. When I did Augusta, I left my bag in the hotel. Like my wife was just doing the picture thing. Yeah, I just, I just, I gave. I think I actually, I think I gave it to her. Yeah, you can't have the phone. There's, you can't have phone, by the way, if you don't know this. No electronics on the course, so like the phones, it's just safer to leave it back. No, it doesn't get wet, doesn't get ruined.
Yeah. Yeah, you're going to come get your bag. Um, you're going to come your, get your bike and all that stuff in, in, in T2 anyway. So, yeah, you can leave your, um, your helmet there. So when you get – if it fits, some of the bike – some of the if – if I wore one of those big aero helmets with my melon head, it wouldn't fit in that bag. Um, so when you get to Austin, you do this again. Now you're in race mode. Right, so now you're laying your stuff out by discipline and you're checking it for the race. So I lay it out, swim, bike, and run. Then I put my I even put my nutrition, all the nutrition I'm gonna need. Like, so I'll talk about this in a second, but your pre race nutrition, you're gonna have something like 20 minutes before your swim wave starts. You put that by the swim stuff. Your bike stuff, you can see it kind of here all laid it out. So shoes are there by the, uh, by the bike stuff, salt, shoes. I just lay it out, swim, bike, and run. And then once I get it all done, I know it's good to go. Then that's when I load the bags and I'm good. I don't have to go back and check it, right? Because I've already checked it twice. So lay it out when you're here so you make sure you have all your stuff before you head out of town. And then when you get there, you get prepared, lay it out again, right? Because that way you're just mentally prepared for it. Um, this bottle thing, if you like, cold right the trick to the bottle is you fill it about a third of the way and you tilt it in the freezer uh at about a 45 to 60 degree angle is that right and that way it the free the water freezes at a line then you can fill it up with water or whatever and it stays cold for a decent amount of time it's going to be warm by the way by the time you get partially on the bike but listen teach their own whatever you need to be comfortable uh yes yeah, so i do this again Race morning. So the first thing you do on race morning is think about how awesome it is to be there, right? First timers, whatever you do is a PR, right? Whatever you do is a PR. So think of the finish line, think of how awesome it's going to be. You're going to get to run past a bunch of people watching you guys run. We're going to make a bunch of noise. It's going to be super fun. I may have a case of beer. I may not. I can't promise you anything, but on the way in, I may offer you one. It happens enjoy it okay wake up ready to enjoy the day okay no <laughs> i am pro gluten um so about an hour and a half prior to your arrival at transition you want to get up you want to eat okay normal meal nothing new this i'm probably you've probably been told that a million times but something normal nothing new Stay away from dairy. Stay away from dairy the night before the race, too. If you go have a pasta dinner, no cheese. Dairy and endurance sports don't mix. It's craptastic. <laughs> don't do it, okay? So stay away from dairy the race morning. My thing, my go-to, bagel, peanut butter, banana on it, some Gatorade, some water, and I'm good. Okay, no dairy there. I'm getting good carbs in, a little bit of fat, some sports drink. That's my go-to. Do what you need to. Everybody has their own favorites, but it's either bagel or Eggo waffle with peanut butter and banana every race. That's what I do. Um, dress, so put your kit on. Heart, put your heart rate strap on first. <laughs> Who's not using a heart rate strap? Okay, everybody else put your heart rate strap on first. Then your kit, then put something warm on over it. If you're hot, while you're getting out there, you're doing the right thing. I want you to break a sweat, I want you to get warm, okay? And it could be artificial, just driving in the car and geez, it's hot, it's fine. Break a sweat, get blood flowing, okay? Um, buy some toss away flip flops, Walmart, Old Navy, something like that, wear them to the race. Again, you heard, there's stickers out there, right? Wear them. And then what will happen is you'll go through the chute to get in the water and you just leave them there and they'll donate them. Okay. Definitely worth doing it. Uh, keeps you from getting anything on your feet and keeps you from having feet that hurt. Do your bathroom business. Try to do it at the hotel. Trust me when I tell you this, uh, in the event that that can't happen, take baby wipes. You'll be happy. And even if you don't get to use them, you will make a friend by lending them some, not lending them, letting them have them. <laughs> Um, I didn't plan that joke, by the way. That was just 
bad. Um, take them with you. Uh, trust me on this. Those things run out of paper all the time. It's, you don't want to be in that situation. Um, head to T2, drop your run bag off if you haven't done it already. Um, get on the bus, head over to the park. Check your bike when you get there. You're going to check really two things, tire pressure, of course, and your gearing. Okay, you want to be in a moderately easy gear, a spinning gear, okay, where you can get a decent cadence going, you know, 90 cadence right out of the gate without a lot of effort because you just came from swimming like this. You're not ready to ride a bike. Your legs, the blood's not flowing there yet, so you got to help it along. So get an easy spinning gear, nice cadence for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, and then you can settle into race pace on the bike. Okay, so nice, easy spinning gear. Check your, check your gear ratio there. Um, once all that stuff set, is all set up and good to go, sit down. Put your headphones in if you want. Listen to some music. I'm a Foo Fighters guy myself. Tends to get me going. Um, you can have your phone in T, yeah, in T1 and then, or you can just give it to, uh, I, I give mine to my wife usually. Your people can be at T1. They'll be right over the fence. They'll know where you're at. And you can just hand them your phone. Yeah. Yeah, this, the swim here is, there's no shoot. Like there are a lot of other races. You just sort of all gather on the banks of the, of the lake. And then you enter when it, your wave is called. Um, Yeah, everyone, everyone could ride the bus and then when they, when you get in the water and you get out, they can watch you come out to swim and then they can take the bus back. Yeah. They can walk. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a spouse and it's just your, if you have a spouse and it's just your spouse going, like the thing that I do, I take my mountain bike and I just not supposed to ride out there, but I do. And then I just ride back from the swim start back to, yeah, I'm not racing, so they can't DQ me. Um, but I do do that. Yeah. Um, it'll be in your race plan, but that's a good question. Um, no later than 6.30. 6.30, no later is what I do and what I recommend my people to do. Do I get ignored? Yeah. But 6.30 is kind of my, what I like. Because and if you get hungry later that night, like if you're in the hotel, you can't sleep, it's 10 o'clock, I'm hungry, PB&Js are solid. Just pound a PB&J, go to bed, you're good. Okay, so early dinner, snack a little bit if you're still up, and then get up the next morning. And, okay. it, you know, that's kind of a myth. Um, carb loading happens days leading up to a race. So going out and, you know, trying to find the best Italian place in Austin, Texas is, you know, fine. It's a great dinner, but you can get carbs anywhere, right? Veggies are carbs, right? So one of the places, one of the last two years, I think dinner, uh, team dinner was at Papado's. So we just all, we just called and got a reservation ate there. Don't have to go there. I'm just saying you can get carbs anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's a good question, Adam. I wouldn't like, don't, don't go nutty. Like it's just pasta and red sauce and bread and that's it. You don't have to do that the night before. You can have a piece of grilled chicken. Chipotle works fine. Yeah. Yeah. Eat normal. Eat normal. If, if you're going to carb load, start like Wednesday and just tick it up 10% that macro up 10% higher than you do normally. Yeah. Uh, 20 minutes to transition close. Get yourself moving. Some plyos, if you have running shoes, go for a little half mile run, get blood flowing, right? Just get warmed up, get the body ready to go. Um, I'm not gonna tell you the, the, the real science behind it. I'm just gonna tell you, get yourself sweating, get yourself going, get the blood pumping, get the heart pumping. <clears throat> yeah, or, or you can just do plyo stuff and just, you know, just move, just move, right? Don't sit still. Um, just do something to get blood flowing and heart pumping a little bit, and then just kind of keep yourself warm. 20 minutes prior to your swim wave, a gel, a chew, a uh, honey stinger waffle, whatever, whatever you, you choose your, your snack of choice. 
but you want to top off the glycogen levels in your body 20 minutes before. If you do it 20 minutes before, when you enter the water, that stuff's going to take effect and you're going to be good to go. You're going to be all ready to, ready to race. Um, that's it. Questions on this? Anything? Anything I didn't cover? Yeah. Don't drink too much. No, just, yeah. Hydrating, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, right. I mean, you want to, yeah. If you go to the restroom in the lake, it's not the end of the world, but I just don't want you overhydrated. Um, there's such thing as overhydration, by the way. So I had an athlete do Chattanooga. Chattanooga was very hot. Um, she, she was following the plan. And she had Gatorade and she was just drinking a lot of water and she was diluting the Gatorade. And so the salt was a sticking around a heavy sweater. She ended up like in the med tent after the race. So not too much. Okay. Not too much on the hydration, just enough. Beet juice is good, but yeah, just when you do your business the next morning, remember you ate beet juice cause it will freak you out. Ironman Canada, I was like, beets. I love beets. Let's do beets. Beets are a good idea. I woke up the next morning thinking I had kind of colon cancer or something crazy, right? But I didn't. True story. I love beets, personally. Yeah. All right, so everybody knows the distance for this swim, so I'm not going to tell you that. Um, again, this is straight out of the athlete got a lot of it. Uh, average water temp between 72 and 78. You can wear a wetsuit all the way up to 83, okay? If you want to cook yourself, you can wear a wetsuit all the way up to 83, right? If you're in a full sleeve wetsuit and it's that high, I don't think it will be, you kind of want to consider not wearing it because you're going to cook yourself in the wetsuit. But again, bring the wetsuit, right? Ask in the expo area what the water temps are. They'll tell you what it's trending to. Um, I didn't mention this, but I'll mention it now. Go to an athlete briefing. Just go to one of them, okay? Invariably, they'll do something will come up, and you'll learn something from the athlete briefing, okay? They're not going to change anything probably, but you'll just have a chance to hear what's going on. You'll, you're, he'll, you will hear water temp, those kinds of things. So sit in on at least one of those. Um, so this is the area where everybody congregates that we talked about. It's kind of, it's longer than the picture implies. Um, and there'll be people out there just hanging out. You'll go in, it's out and back and around. It's pretty straightforward. The swim here is decent, right? Yeah, it's decent. It's, it's a fair lake. It's not usually crazy. The sun's in the right spot. So you don't have to worry too much about it being on your line. With that said though, um, Please do consider taking um, both clear and tinted goggles with you or get photochromatic ones, which you can get nowadays fairly inexpensively. And those are the ones that switch based upon um, the lighting conditions. Of course, if you haven't been using these, you're not using any new stuff. But if you, have, if you don't have clear goggles and it's an overcast day, it's just going to be a little harder to sight. So that's why I'm telling you take both with you if you don't mind. Yeah. It's, you're going count, counterclockwise. No, clockwise, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Swim waves, who hasn't looked? Everybody's looked, right? You haven't looked? Respect. <laughs> you're like, doesn't care. Um, so here's a reference for you. Again, this is athlete guide stuff. Um, so swim cutoff, not that anybody needs to know this, but swim cutoffs is 70 minutes, an hour and 10 minutes. Um, again, not that anyone needs to know that, but anyway, the bike, this is the part you want to pay attention to. Yes, ma'am. Say that's going to take a lot more 
Mm -hmm. You can take extra with you. Yeah. So if you get, yeah, you got to be out of there by seven to seven fifteen. You may eat twice in that morning, just two snacks, right? Two, two honey single waffles or whatever. Um, but yeah, you, and that, that's a good, that's a good point. If you're a late wave, make sure you take enough with you to where you can still top off. Like, like I told you to. Yeah. Yeah. This, I don't know, this came straight out of there today. So yeah. Seven. The sun doesn't come up till 740 something. So that's probably has a lot to do with it. Um, the bike course. This bike course needs to be ridden a very specific way or you will f give up some of your run. It's just the facts. There are hills the first bunch of miles, but then you will get a pretty nice set of hills towards the end, okay? So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is regulate your effort, especially at the beginning, the first two thirds of the bike, would you say, Tab? Regulate your effort. What that means is ride easier than you normally would, okay? Because once you hit the, this guy at around 35, you get a pretty healthy dose. You get a big climb, you get a descent, you got another pretty decent climb, you got another descent, and then another decent climb. And it all comes between 35 and 56, okay? So what I want you to do is keep yourself regulated in here. Take free speed on downhills, okay? Don't bomb them in your big gear, you know, big gear just because you can make 40 miles an hour down this hill, right? Just take what it gives you. If you ride a power meter, keep your normalized power low, okay? If you, if you have a coach, they'll give you a number to follow. Follow the number. My first 70.3, I rode 12% over my normalized power and thought it was no big deal. And then I talked to Raul, who was my coach, and he's like, that's a very big deal, and that's why you're, you shit the bed on the run, frankly, is exactly what he said to me, right? Regulate your effort on the bike. How you ride the bike determines how well you're going to be able to run, okay? So regulate effort, eat, and hydrate like clockwork. Whatever your coach tells you to do frequency-wise, my folks, I tell them 20 minutes. Garmin has a 20-minute alarm. It goes off and like Pavlov's dog, you eat. That alarm goes off, you eat. That alarm goes off, you eat. Like clockwork, you know exactly how much to eat every single time. Or you have a target for every hour, right? So you just have to hit that hourly target. Copy that, makes sense? Um, again, most of you will have a number to hit. If you don't have a power meter, it'll be heart rate, which is fine, it's great, right? If you have a power meter, it should be normalized power is what I use for the folks that I work with. And that is a very good number to follow. Yes, sir. They, you're a little bit of both. Like this one at 27 is short, but not fun. Um, in here, what makes these harder is you're, you're kind of over it, honestly. You're like, I'm ready to get done with this now, right? So it's a big hill. Um, but if you ride easy going into it, you'll be okay. And my other recommendation on these hills is spin up the hills. Like don't go trying to hold 11 mile an hour up a big hill. If you're making six miles an hour, so what? Just make it up to the top of the hill, crest the hill, bomb down it. Uh, I don't, oh, this one? Yeah. yeah, it goes from something like 440 up to 600. Yeah. The total elevation gain on this thing is not that bad. They just come in a, they come at the end. So just prepare yourself for it is all I'm saying. I'm not trying to make a big deal of it. I just want you guys to regulate it going into those hills. By the way, if you ever do Oceanside, same story. Oceanside's like, phew, you can bomb it. And all of a sudden you get to like 30 and it's this monstrosity. And you're like, oh, that's going to be fun. And then there's three more of them. Kind of a similar course. Okay. Yeah. 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 So every calorie that goes in gets water behind it. And I'm not talking like 
16 ounces of water for eight ounces of other, other calories, right? It's just a sip of water behind any calorie that goes in. It's just, it helps absorption. Whatever calorie that is, you're gonna help, it's, your body's gonna make use of it faster because you chase it with some water. So it also is a good strategy just to keep you hydrated, but not so much. Like I'm not looking for you to finish a half a bottle of water with every calorie. I'm just saying chase every calorie with some water. Calorie water. Y yeah. Um, ideally, you'll have straight water, right? But if you – there are coaches out there. Um, Laura, for example, she just qualified for Kona at Chattanooga. She's straight Gatorade, no water, whole, whole day. So there's a belief that you can, you can do that. Like she did not have any water, right? So you can do it, but ideally water helps absorption better than something with calorie in it. So one loop. Uh, run, more rollers, okay? You, some of you will see me and you'll be like, I don't like this run course at all. I'm ready for it if I see you. I'm gonna wave and say, you're doing great. And you're gonna say, this sucks, but it's gonna be great, okay? What you get is you get, it's pretty flat coming out T2. You'll run past tent cities, what I call it. Then you'll get out and you're gonna head towards, back towards where you swam. And out there, you kinda, it's, it's kinda just a steady roller. Um, it's not like this or anything, it's just, it's not flat, right? That's the, it feels like that, but it's not. It's, it, Wim Haven-ish, yeah. Right, Jess, would you say? Not, not as bad? Yeah, so um, you're gonna get, now, the, 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 here's the thing, three loops, right? So you get to see Tent City three times. It's fun, it's gonna be a pretty day. Um, it's good. First mile, super easy, okay? I want you to take the effort easy is what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's an easy run, it's not, okay? You're running a half marathon off of a 56 mile bike. Not an easy thing to do. But the first mile, I want you guys to try to take it really easy. If you have a coach, do what the coach tells you. If he tells you to bomb, he's your coach, not me. What I'd say is get the heart rate down, relax, get a baseline going, and then settle into race pace, okay? The folks I work with, they have a target heart rate. So if I look at the file and it's flat at 160 and that's the number I asked for, I don't care what the pace is, okay? Well, maybe towards the end. I usually say, check yourself at mile eight. If you're feeling good, go. Pull the trigger, right? But from start to mile eight or start to mile nine for some folks, it should look just like steady, steady Eddie the whole way, okay? Stop it, not stop at aid stations. Walk aid stations, fuel and hydrate every aid station. Um, again, water last, it's usually my thing. If it's warm, you feel warm, grab ice. Put ice in your shorts, put ice in your shirt, sponges in your shirt, whatever you need to do to cool your body down. Get your core body temperature down. Um, just keep moving, okay? Just keep moving. Uh, what else? I, can, I think I covered all this. Mm. It, it, it's not bad. No, I can't. It gets a little tight towards the expo side of Tent City, like after the spectators sort of end and it gets in there. It gets a little tight, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the rules. Swim steady, ride smart, eat and drink like a champ, and pace your run evenly, and you'll have a great day. It, it's really that simple. It's really that simple. You've done the training, so trust in that. Like, be, you have that foundation. Like, if you go into this thing thinking, oh my God, like, I need you guys to take a look at Training Peaks and see all the work you did, and say, yeah, I'm ready right? Because what I tell people all the time is, if you did the work, the only thing that can screw you, screw you up on, the race, on race day is, is how you execute the race plan. That's it, right? You don't regulate your effort right, or you, um, you don't eat, or you don't drink, right? All of the things within your control have to do with that execution, 
right? Because that's what it's about. It's just managing the stuff that's in your control. The last thing I'll tell you is it's a long day. And if it doesn't go perfectly, and many of them don't, you have a lot of time to fix whatever it is. If you fix it, if you forget an eating, for example, right? Alarm goes off and you just ghosted it or you were on a downhill and you're like, I'll eat in a second. You forget. Fine. Let it go. You're going to eat again, right? So whatever happens, whether it's I forget a feeding or knock on wood, I get a flat, right? Just deal with it and move on. It's a long day, right? It's not a sprint race. Sprint race, some of those things happen. You're really trying to compete. It's over. There'll be another one. It's a long day. It's beautiful because you have time, right? So just deal with it, triage it, remedy it, and move on. Cool? All right. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Great one. Um, you're going to know when a aid station is coming because you're going to see it for one and they're going to tell you. Holler with intent when you're approaching. Gatorade, water, banana. Slow down, take your hand up. If you're not comfortable, okay, and you need to stop to take that stuff in, perfectly fine. Navigate your, navigate your way as far to the right as you can, feather in your brake, pull off, and then stop. Do not slam on your brakes, or you're going to meet a friend fast. Okay? Aid stations are where a lot of these things happen. Be smart. So all, all you got to do is use your common sense. So if you need to stop, you feel like you need to stop, or you need to go to the bathroom, whatever it is that's causing you to have to come to a stop, just move to the right, as far to the right as you can. Ease yourself over. You can even say stopping, or you can put a hand up like this to the person behind you, and they'll know, and they'll come around to the right. Be vocal, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Do not stop suddenly. Announce your intent to the volunteer or announce your intent to the other athlete. I, I didn't mention this earlier, but if you're passing, let the person know you're passing. And please, for the love of sweet, hairy baby Jesus, don't wait till you're bar to bar with them to tell them you're passing them. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that. You just scare the crap out of that person. <laughs> so a lot of times, like he said, you, their head's down and they're just arrow out and they're cranking away and they don't, like, they don't even realize you're coming. And you get to, you know, right here, on your left, like, I may end up in the bar ditch. I don't know, right? Talk to each other. Talk to each other, right? Anybody going for a world championship slot come Sunday, next Sunday? Okay. Tell each other you're doing a great job. You're not competing with anybody but yourself from what you just told me. Thank volunteers. Please thank volunteers. These races don't happen without them. Cops. Yeah, they're making a little money. They're still out there for a long time, right? So tell each other good job, pump each other up out there, whether you know them or not, right? You see somebody with their head down, they need, they need to pick me up, right? Give them one. Thank volunteers, thank cops, right? Super important. Yeah. So traffic and road services. Mixed. It's all over the place. And by the way, hopefully they've done some work, but um, – it, it, there's some of that, some of it's flat, some of it's, you, you want to be on the shoulder. There'll be part of it, Eric, like around here where you can get in that groove and it, the, away from the chip sale. There's like a groove and you, yeah, there's some of that, but it's all, I'm telling you, man, it's a mix. There's a pothole. Yeah, it's 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 more mixed than here. Mm. Well, the positive reframe is is you'll know if something's coming up. <laughs> yeah. 
No. It's not not usually too busy. No. Yeah, Sunday race day, everybody out there by now knows what's going on and they stay away. So not bad at all. Adam. Yeah. Yeah. If you have if you have time and you're down there, you get there by lunchtime on Friday, go drive the thing. Right. I usually try to drive some of it if it's a race I've never done before. And then when I do my ride on my bike just to check everything out, I'll go sometimes I'll go like ride the ride the run course. Right. So that's kind of how I do my little recon when I get down there. So it's not a bad idea at all. Jeff from the interwebs. Yes. Coke and Red Bull. Uh, I'm not a Red Bull guy, um, but Coke will change your life. I will just start with that. I am not overdoing this. Um, so Jeff, Jeff is, uh, has a good point. So uh, there's a rule around Coke. So Coke is on the course for a reason, and it's not because they're a sponsor, and oftentimes it's not even real Coke, but it doesn't matter. Um, Coke's on the run course because the sugar – gets into your body sublingually and immediately you, you like you're resurrected. So if you hit, if you hit a wall, little, little shot of Coke. Now I'm not saying belly up to the bar and have an eight ounce glass with some ice, take a shot of it, chase it with some water. And in every aid station you go from there on, you got to take that same shot because you guys have felt a sugar crash before. Try doing it in an endurance race. The crash is, it's good. You'll feel it. Um, so every, when you go to Coke, stay on Coke. I usually tell folks, wait till the last half of the run to, to go there unless you have to, um, unless you have to, like when I went to Canada and it was a bad day, I went to Coke at like mile four. That's when you know, that's when you know that day's not going to end well. Okay. They, they broke, they, it's, it's at the aid station. Um, Red Bull, Red Bull's also out there. Kind of the same thing, right? Coke and Red Bull, similar characteristics. They have some caffeine um, and they have simple sugar, right? Which is super helpful. I call it triathlete crack. Once you're on it, you feel it and you don't want to get off of it. Um, another tip, and have this in your T2 bag, Excedrin. Excedrin. Um, a lot of folks like ibuprofen, um, Tylenol. Excedrin has caffeine in it. I just learned this from uh, Tabitha, who just did Louisville, and she's like, I learned something, Excedrin. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you have stomach, if you have stomachy upsetness that pops up, I also take mint Tums, chewable mint Tums with me. So that's another thing that I'll do for these distance races and above is I'll have like just a chewable mint Tums. And if my stomach's like too much of something, I'll, I'll chew a Tums and feel a lot better. Yes, ma'am. On the run. Along those lines, how, what do you recommend about taking a number of your I, I've never done that. Oh. And I don't, have a, I don't have a position on this. Yes, I swear by it. Not just, you know, they say to take two, but I just take one. Yeah. You know, it's a fair, fair minimum. Yeah. I have heard some coaches are adamantly against it. I, I've not. I swear, I swear by it. So I don't, I don't, I've never, I don't have an experience. So, but if you have issues that that helps with, that I'd say. The one thing I didn't mention is, you know, again, with a long day thing, try to keep yourself comfortable, right? With comfort comes performance. So, that's why I, had, I do the Tums thing or I, you know, I, I, I'll do little things just to kind of help out, right? So keep yourself comfortable just for sure. Just what you're used to in a normal life situation. Yeah. I'm going to take Tums. I never do Rolaids or something else. I'm not going to all of a sudden do a different brand I've never done before. Yeah. Other Whatever you've used in every aspect of this is what I want you to do. So mine is Tums, Mint, Peppermint, Tums, Chewables. That's what I use, right? I don't take them usually normally, but if I need them, I will. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So um, this is a good one. 
Um, you know those gigantic Ziploc bags they sell? Go buy a box of them. But I think there's four to a box. And um, if it's raining or there's a threat of rain, put your Ironman bags in that bag and then Ziploc it. And then your stuff stays dry. So if you turn your run bag in, for example, the night before, get a little sprinkle that night, your run bag will be dry. Yeah. So, so big jo the big the big Ziploc bags work wonders, and your Ironman bag will fit in there. I've used it before, and it works great. So big Ziplocs, Target has them, I believe. Yeah. Yes, another lesson I learned, and this is a good one. Ironman Texas last year, not this past year, year before, was a pool in transition. And I didn't have bags on my shoes. It took me five miles to get the mud out of the – I have speed plays. So you can imagine what caked in mud in that little cylinder took to get out while you're trying to ride the bike. It took forever. So it's not a bad idea. If Take some with you. Probably won't need them. But if it rains and it's muddy in transition, what you'll do is you'll, when you come out of transition and you're running your bike out, you'll have the bags on your shoes and it'll just protect your cleat from getting all muddied and gummed up. It's a good one. Yeah. Just one last thing. If you train with power or with heart rate, um, change the battery if you haven't done it very soon. Otherwise, you'll be doing the entire race without heart rate. It should be really not conscious. Or your power. Yeah. I've done that too. That's another legendary. I, like, I make a lot of mistakes, guys. <laughs> I'm here, a humble man. Yes. I did Ironman Maryland with one gear. Not recommended. It was so bad. It was so bad that these guys hid my battery. Now I can't get to my battery anymore. So I can't take it out. No, I don't need that. I just need you to hide the battery for me and just tell me where to plug it in. And that way I don't take the battery out. What else guys? What other questions? We have some time. So if you got them, I'm here. We ready? We feeling good? Um, what do you do now? Oh, uh, well, I kind of talked about it earlier. It depends on what the something is. If you're feeling bad, um, you slow down. That's rule number one. If you're feeling bad, you slow down. By going fast, doesn't help feeling bad. It just makes it worse. So if you're feeling bad, something is not agreeing with you, slow down. Sometimes it'll subside. Um, so that's rule number one. Um, on the swim, if you get kicked or your goggle leaks or something like that, all I want you guys to do is roll over. Roll over. If you have a wetsuit on, you're just going to be floating. Breathe. Okay. Remember I said the word breathe. Because you get in that situation, you roll over and you just forget to breathe and your heart rate just stays up. It stays jacked up. Right. The fastest way to leave the water without coming out on your own is to let your heart rate get out of control and just freak out. Right. So just roll over and breathe. Calm down right? Sit there as long as you need to and roll back over and start swimming one arm in front of the other. Okay. Another option, find a sup, find a kayak, grab on, take care of whatever the issue is. Take a little breather. When you're ready, you go. Those, those guys will sit there and let you hang on there as long as you want. Okay. So if it happens in the water, relax, breathe. Some people sing, a song, some people count to 10, right? Some people count to 100. I don't, I don't know. Just roll. The key thing is roll over and try. The other thing is try not to bob up and down, okay? Especially if you've swimming, been swimming like three quarters of a mile, right? And you've been parallel the whole way. And now goggle something happens and you go like this and you're just bobbing. No bueno, okay? Your body's not ready for that. So roll over and stay flat. Just roll over and stay flat. Breathe. Breathing is really important. You get the hint. On the bike, you just 
again, control what you can control. The whole race, by the way, is this way, especially on the bike. The bike makes or breaks every race. What you on the bike determines everything, okay? So regulate effort, eat, drink, that's it. Those are your jobs on the bike. If something goes wrong, take care of it, okay? If you don't have the means to take care of it, pull over to the side, sag will be by. They'll take care of you, okay? That's out of your control. Now with that said, two tubes, two CO2 cartridges on your bike. If they're not on there now, buy them when you're here and get some electrical tape and tape them to the top tube. You don't have to have a fancy thing behind your seat that holds your entire garage and all your tools, right? Two tubes, two CO2s, and the, th the fitting for the CO2s and electric tape around part of your bike and you've got everything you need to fix a flat which is the most common thing that's gonna happen on the bike, okay? On the run, to Jesse's point, just not feeling good, slow down. Keep moving, no matter what, just keep moving, okay? If you walk run, fine. A lot of people walk run. A lot of people's strategy is to walk run. If you start running, you're feeling good, and all of a sudden, you're not feeling it, stomach hurts, slow down. If it really hurts, Try to walk for a little bit, right? Try to walk, settle down. If you're cramping, take some salt, walk a little bit. Let the salt kick in, try it again. Again, it's a long day. Just take those things on as they come, deal with them, move on, just keep moving, right? What else? Uh, they say there are between 100 and 150 people, but So, Doug, another good point. So, uh, line up on the swim. Um, if you, what you want to do is, first of all, don't wait to go out. Don't wait to go out, okay? The more people you're out there with, the more draft you get, okay? So, get out there and swim. When the gun goes off, you need to be swimming. Don't wait. Mm hmm Really. Line up the opposite side that you breathe. Okay, so if you're a right, left side breather, line up to the right. If you're a right side breather, line up to the left because there are people on either one of your sides and you can sight and draft off of them. Right? Yeah. Don't hold the draft too, too long. If you're having to work too hard, let them go. There'll be another one. Okay? Your job is to hug the buoy line until you find the right draft. It's not to crank out 145s keeping up with some Michael Phelps character, right? You're just burning matches in the water. It's a bad idea, right? Nice, easy race pace. You guys probably know what that is by now. Slightly above moderate, right? That's all you're looking for. Slightly above moderate the whole way on the, on the swim. Hug the buoy line, sight often. If you have a good draft, still check their work. Trust me, another one of those. It's been a nightmare. It's a good one, though. Yeah. It's a very calming thing. I want to slam my lap and just get on the paddle board or just in an open ocean with someone sitting next to you. Yeah, it's extremely comforting because every yeah. time you go to take your breath. You know there's somebody there. Yeah, I see someone there, so, I mean, yeah. I'm a pretty straight swimmer, which is good for me. I can swim without strap, without, without sighting as much, but just that someone there every time I go for that breath, mm -hmm. just a very relaxing Yeah, thing. don't wait to go out. I see y'all are out in the open water so much. Right? Yes. Just come out. <laughs> where? Uh, Stewart Creek Park. I'll give you info when we wrap that's up. That's where, like, uh, In the colony. Yeah, that's, like, Yes. Yeah, Triple Threat had their big training day out there too, where they swam the island. Yeah. Just if you want to swim Sunday, um, we'll be out there. You guys can come swim. I would bring the wetsuit. It's not not really. I mean, but get in the wetsuit just to get in the wetsuit. Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. 
Uh -huh. Should I switch myself to gaming with them? I'm not gonna. I'm not very good other than the. the Are you mean you mean for the tri club program? So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get to the, when you get to the. No, no, no. It's all a participation thing. No, please. This is not. No, no, no. It's it's the way that tri club program works with Iron Man. It's participation. Okay. So That's what I want. just your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go in there and tell. When you get to the expo, there'll be a lady. It's. The tent called Tri Club Program. Tri Club Program. Too much talking, not enough water. Just go in there and tell them your name and who you're with, and they'll sign you up. Yeah. <clears throat> well, here's the good thing: you're not in Augusta, Georgia, right? You're in Austin, so you can, um, you know, they're a bike. They're a bike. Their bike, uh, bicycle world is based down there. No, Johnny's is down there. That's, yeah, Jack and Adam's bicycle world. Mm -hmm. That's who bought them. Mellow Johnny's. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so if you forget something, you know, you're in Austin and, you know, it's a 15 minute shot down 35, you get everything you need. Uh, but again, try to knock that stuff out while you're here. That way you don't have to worry about it. Other questions? Let's see if there's any from uh, in the chat window. I don't see any. As long as it's done before you go. I'm just saying most bike shops like here, they're scheduling out to Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, if you don't get the bike in in the next couple of days, yeah, so you'll be fine. No, no, get it done. Just get it done before. Um, last year, the swim started pretty flat, and then the wind kicked in a little bit, but it still was, I mean, Tabitha was in there. It was still okay. Yeah. Yeah, listen, um, just coach tip, don't check the weather till like Wednesday next week. You can't control it, and the weatherman's the only guy in the world who makes six figures a year to be wrong 80% of the time. Right? So whatever it says it is, it's probably not going to be that when you get there. Morning of the race. Take, yeah. yeah, take the take the wetsuit with you race morning. Take it with you. Take it with you because they'll announce that morning what the, the water temperature is. But it's also just right again, dudes, again, like take the wet, trust me, like it's been a month and I, I never wanted a wetsuit so bad in my life and it wasn't there. So just take the wetsuit with you. You can just shove it in the bag if you don't use it. It was this year. Yeah. No, it was hot outside. Plenty hot outside, but the water wasn't. Yeah. Very nice one. Yes. 70. Three. <laughs> That's cold. My first ocean side was fifty-eight. It was bad. Yeah, that was fun though. What else, guys? Anything? All right. Yeah. There's a wetsuit wave. It's last. But I'm last. Your chip time still starts with your normal wave, though. So if you wear the wetsuit, and like for example, if you're wave two, not that's pro. If you're wave five, and you decide to wear your wetsuit, you're not only no, it's not that. It's <coughs> cut off time starts from your chip time. Wetsuit wave. So you get less time. Doesn't start at the same time. 
Yeah. Only if it's not wetsuit legal. Right. Yeah. 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 So make that decision wisely. Um, and for many people, it'll be worth it. And for other people, it won't make sense. For Adam, if he's last wave, I mean, talking about four minutes. So not a big deal. So, yeah. But bring the wetsuits. I know I've said it a million times, bring the wetsuits. Yeah, or you give it to your family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the bag, by the way, I think I said this, but just in case, the bag that you shove all your swim stuff into, you don't have to go back to that transition. They will take that bag and bring it to the finish line for you. So you're not having to go all the way back out to the lake. Unlike Augusta, which is a long way. You will take your spike stuff out of a bag and shove your swim stuff into the same bag. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna, no. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, or you got to be wear something you're prepared to lose. So, you know, if you go, if you go buy a sweatshirt, a sweatshirt at Walmart for 10 bucks, yeah, yeah. you just make a decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're late, if you're late and don't have family with you that you can hand stuff off to, whatever you leave there stays there. You're not coming back. Once, well, but it gets turned in. It has to be turned in. Yeah, right around that time. I think it's got to be turned in when the race starts. So latest you get 7.30. What else? Anything? Everything's supposed to be in the bag, but I know, at, uh, I know at Augusta, people just had their helmet buckled to their bars. Definitely ask them. When, like, the other thing about this race is this, like, every TD is different. Every, TD. Every race director is different. So, um, you know, even though they're all Ironman, they all have different rules. Like Augusta is not a clean transition, but Austin is a clean transition. So they are, they're all, they all still are a little bit different from time to time. So if you have a question, ask down there when you get there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, I think we're done unless you guys have other questions. If you want info on the open water swim, uh, come see me. I'm sure our family would love to have you. Um, I'll get you squared away on that. Yes, ma'am.